Hello, hello. Welcome back. Another week of Lancaster Connects, the show, the sports talk community. I'm Jeff here at Gardner's Mattress and More. I'm in. Like, so we're working. <laughs> okay. Sorry. All right. Well, now we have to clue the people in. So our wonderful guest that we're going to bring on in a few minutes, uh, Brad, nailed it with the preparation for a guest like on the show. Guest of the year. Yeah. We've had many guests of the year, but Brad was like perfect in, in yeah. alignment. Yeah. There's a Audio. lot of things we do back beyond the scenes that you would never see. And so when I said, hey, you did really good, I'm like Jordan the Swish, right? And Ben, Michael Jordan throwing up a, a, a throw, a basket, you know, yeah, you shoot, throw a like, basket, shoot, whatever. You throw a football. Right. You could tell I don't play basketball. And and Ben's like, you're doing that wrong. He's right-handed. I'm like, well, but I'm right-handed. And this is going to shoot. I'm going to have to go dribble a basketball at home today. I mean, I've never was good at basketball. Or maybe that's why. We're going to play one-on-one next Monday at 2 o'clock. Yeah, no, I think that would be. (laughs) That's good. I think that's. I think I just need to dribble once and I'll figure it out. (laughs) I think. Yeah. So. Is there anybody else out there that's right-handed but goes up to shoot and the left hand leads? Well, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of kids that do that. I see this all the time in baseball. They're like left-handed kids, but they swing righty or vice versa. You know, they wait throw righty, swing okay. left. So it is more normal than you made me feel all along. I don't know that it happens so it's much in basketball. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. We're like we're like as as the hip happen and Lancaster Connect shows going, everybody's dancing and grooving. I'm here trying to lay my heart out. And Ben's like, no, that's terrible. That's it's trash. It. That's why you're terrible at basketball. That's why you never made the team. <laughs> this is what happens here in these four walls sometimes. Mayhem. Yeah. Outside of helping people wake up happy, outside of people, uh, helping people wake up happy and pain-free, which is our primary business here at Gardner's Mattress and More. We're in the midst of our summer sales season. Labor Day promotions officially begin Tomorrow, uh, Tempur-Pedic, save up to $700 on Tempur-Pedic mattresses. We have our double deals, free size upgrades. Uh, we'll pay your sales tax, all kinds of fun things to maximize the discounts on your upcoming purchase. Please do check us out. We'd love to be able to help you. As I said, this is the show that helps our community. Something else that we do, we kind of launched it late last school mm-hmm. year. Yep. Um, because we had an opportunity to get some amazing pillows at an amazing price. And I said, well, let's give them away. And so that's why we're doing what now? Yeah. Well, it's just, just giving away, just giving them away. Giving away. Give them no, away. T- I'm sorry. I would interrupt you. Tell them, tell them how we're giving them away. <laughs> ben Nate's uh, podcasting. <laughs> it's not it's, basketball. It's, it's back to school for your kid. It's back to podcasting school. That's right. Them. That's right. Uh, and I'll take the ba- basketball lessons with, them. but uh, no, we have our nominated student program. So this is where, um, all Lancaster County teachers. So uh, as you're getting to know your kids, maybe you got the same kids coming back. Uh, maybe you moved up a grade level with them. I don't know if teachers do that. Like I know football coaches, you know, typically the dad coaches move up with their kids team. Teachers, uh, basically this, if you have a student that you know struggling, you know they're not getting a great night's sleep, you know a, a nice, wonderful new pillow uh, would just lift their spirits, help them out. Uh, make them more prepared for the day, help them get a better night's sleep. We want to be a part of that. Go to gardenersmattressandmore.com slash nominate. There's a simple form there. We tell a story of where this, this little part of our various efforts to give back to our community started. It was with Miss Huber and uh, School District of Lancaster McCaskey had a student who was sleeping on the floor. And we have a picture of the student there. And if you notice uh, that back corner, if you look, you can see up the ceiling, it, that, that, that young man was sleeping on the floor and there was a lot of black mold on the carpet. Uh, so we, you know, we didn't, we didn't see the conditions at the time, but seeing it after the fact, boy, it was just so nice to be able to help him wake up happy and really live a truly healthier life um, and get him up off the floor. And so we've got these pillows. We'd love to nominate them, get them in your kid's hands, you know, a little more comfort, a little more relaxation, helpfully sleep better and be more prepared for their data when you help them learn and grow. So gardenersmattressandmore.com slash nominate. Did I leave anything out? I don't think so. I mean, really, this is a call for teachers, uh, just like Miss Miss Huber. I mean, it was it's really cool to be able to help uh, children like that. And yep. uh, when she reached out, I mean, the answer was an immediate yes. We'll figure out a way to make it happen. So we'd like to make it happen for a lot of other children in our community. So just looking for more Miss Hubers out there. Yeah, I think 
I think it was like 50 pillows or so. Yeah. Is that what yeah, it was? We got a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we'll continue to talk about that as the school year starts officially kicks off and, uh, and then picks up as we get in. So that's that. I think it's time to bring on our wonderful guest, Brad Hortenzi from, he is the Eastern regional director from Zoe international. Brad, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for being here. And, uh, by the way, Jeff, I think your form is great. I don't think, uh, I think that, uh, yeah, I didn't see anything wrong with that even a little bit. So. Would you drive? It's a fade away. Yeah, that's there. You go. Yeah, yeah. I faded away to to the side, to, to, to the back. You were avoiding the defender, like like yeah, uh, Steph Curry in, right. in the gold medal game on Saturday. My gosh, what a performance there! If I was if I was on that comeback, if I was on that team, comebacks wouldn't even been part of the conversation. <laughs> they they didn't force the mercy rule. So what you're saying? That's right. That's right. <laughs> the mercy road. Mercy, get this guy off the court. <laughs> Brad, thank you for joining us. We'll we'll get into you and what you do here for our community. Um, so for those who don't know, uh, give us the the background on Zoe International. What is the mission? Who do you serve? And and how do you help our community? Ooh. Yeah. Well, first off, thanks for the opportunity uh to share. So uh, Zoe International, we've been around for about 20 years, uh, originated um, in Los Angeles, California, and Thailand. Uh, our founders had started this. We are an anti-trafficking nonprofit. Uh, currently, we are in five countries, uh, Thailand, Japan, Mexico, Australia, and here in the U.S. And then here in the U.S., we're in Southeast Pennsylvania, mostly Lancaster County, and also uh, Los Angeles. Uh, we do... A number of things. Um, we have homes for uh, rescued children in Thailand that serves uh, about 60 to 70 children. Uh, and then we also have a child rescue center in Thailand that we work within task forces uh, in Thailand with the World Thai Police and the Thai Social Services where uh, that home actually um, serves children that are freshly taken right out of trafficking in Thailand. Uh, and then in Los Angeles, we have a home for trafficked uh, girls in Los Angeles um, and do a number of advocacy and mentor things there. Um, and uh, here in Lancaster County, we it's a little unique. It's uh, We've been here about uh, five years now in Lancaster County. Um, and so uh, I serve as the coordinator of the Lancaster County Human Trafficking Task Force. So I, um, I'm a volunteer coordinator under District Attorney Heather Adams. And um, District Attorney Heather Adams has been very um, aggressive in her administration of going after human trafficking. So there was uh, a task force set up and uh, Zoe is the originating or sort of the organizing and the coordinating organization within the task force. We just make sure um, we're filling gaps with prevention. We're doing restoration and we can talk about that a little bit more. But but generally speaking, we are the coordinating organization uh, that comes alongside um the district attorney's human trafficking task force and fills in when, where we can. Okay. So we have police, we have district attorney. How does a case originate? Cause I think a lot of people would think in Lancaster County, wait, we have a human trafficking problem. <laughs> you know, this is, this is an idyllic area. You got the city and its vibrancy, you got the countryside, you got tourism, <laughs> you got farming. This does not sound like a place that would need this kind of focus and effort. So how does, how does the, I don't want to say need, but how does the, how do the incident incidences arise and what's your part in, in bringing everything to light? Yeah. Great question. So, um, and you're absolutely right. This is a great place to live and work. Um, and it's interesting when we begin to tell people, uh, how busy we've been as a task force and their eyes are just very shocked with what's going on. Um, Heather Adams just shared a statistic um, since the beginning of our human trafficking task force uh, started three years ago. There's been, I believe, 117 arrests um, in Lancaster County in those three years. Now, those those are not specific, not all specifically for human trafficking. Uh, many of those are to cut down the demand for online um, sex, basically, um, here in Lancaster County, which we can go into some some details there that are just really, that's what really surprised people. So 
The cases start a number of ways. Uh, we're doing a number of stings here in Lancaster County. Um, but also sometimes there's tips that come in and sometimes we've had where, um, some women have reached out and says, I need, I need help. And then the task force will come around on certain ways of, um, working the case that way of trying to find her, trying to get access to her, um, if she needs help. Uh, so where do these tips come in from? Like if somebody sees something or knows something or needs to reach out, how do they do that? So generally speaking, uh, there's always the 911 call, um, that can help it, but, but because of the trauma bond and because there's things that are going on in her life. And I say her, um, there are, there is human trafficking with, um, with all sexes. It's just generally speaking, we're, we're, because there's so many, um, numbers with, with women, we usually say her, but, but she could always call 911. Sometimes they do, but, but not always. Um, some of these cases come in through the, um, uh, national human trafficking hotline. And that'll get filtered to a national hotline, and then that'll go to different coordinating uh, law enforcement agencies um, around. And then that's that's how some of the cases come in. But but the majority of them are proactive police stings um, where we're we're actually actively trying to cut down on the on the demand of um, of online sex. Uh, those guys coming towards those guys that want to seek um, those type of services online with adults. We're, we're trying to really cut down on those type of guys, those guys that are coming that are trying to find services with children. Um, and then there's also, what we'll do is we'll answer the ads that are out there and trying to um, seek relationship with the women there uh, to try and pull them out of human trafficking. Hmm. Wow. Um, you shared as we were ramping up before we went live, you often rattled on in this hmm on the sting operations. Um, so share with us, you know, obviously we don't want you to, we, we said again in the free show, we don't want you to like reveal any tactics. We don't want you to obviously uh, reveal any victims or anything like that, okay. but maybe for the listeners and people watching, you know, give us some insight as to what those moments are like. And, and most importantly, why you're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Zoe international in, in a situation like the, the stings, depending on there's, there's a, there's those three type of stings, three stings within one operation that, uh, we do talk about. Um, so there's that going on. So most times those are hotel stings, um, at hotels. Um, during that time, really what we're seeing is again, we're there. Law enforcement and prosecution doesn't need any help. They're doing a great job in, um, seeking out and constantly trying to look and probe to find human trafficking. Um, but where, Zoe International comes in is once contact is made with the women, um, our advocates, we have trained advocates that their job is to seek relationship with them, offer services. Uh, not every woman that we come in contact with um, would have a trafficker or a pimp, um, so to speak. Um, so those that don't, we're offering services to them to see if there's anything we can do to help them um, maybe not, uh, go online and offer the services. Um, if there's something we can do there. So, and then those that we feel that are being trafficked again, what services can we provide? Or is there anything we can do to try and pull them out of the life? There's a, a bit of a misnomer that thinking that when we come across someone that is being trafficked, that they're going to wrap their arms around us and say, thank you for saving me. I'm, I'm so glad to be a part of this process. That just doesn't happen. Um, uh, the, the, because of the trauma bond, most people that are are engulfed in trafficking don't even realize they're being trafficked and they're in this really warped relationship with their trafficker and he's taken access or he's he's taken advantage of their vulnerability um so they're not making the great decisions and and he's making all the decisions for them so many times when they come in contact with us um it's our job just to love them unconditionally and just sort of offer some services and a continued relationship if it's safe uh, to see if there's anything we can do to help them come out of the life. Yeah. Wow. I hadn't considered, um, that fact of having that bond between trafficker sure. and victim. That's pretty wild to think here you are in that moment sure. offering safe Harbor, you know, resources. And, and we'll talk about the resources here in a minute, but that's, that's really wild to think. So that's the importance of having 
Zoe International, your advocates there <laughs> on scene, right? To grab, like, because that's an opportunity to, to get some mind share, cool. plant the seed, right? That's that's a great opportunity. And, the, you know, the iron's hot right there. So there's a number of things we can we can swoop in and do that. So, um, and we don't do this alone. Uh, we recently started partnering with North Star Initiative, um, great organization here locally. We also um, uh, have begun to partner with the YWCA here in Lancaster. So really what, what my job is just to pull in all these resources of the experts and collaboratively let's work together to work this problem. Yeah, yeah. Brad, I have a question, um, actually maybe two questions. Uh, why Lancaster um, for, for human trafficking? I know we talked a little bit about, um, you know, at the, at the beginning that, that you're in Lancaster and you know, I just kind of want to know what, why the roots here in Lancaster. And then is human trafficking a relatively new thing in terms mm-hmm. of being or needing to be policed uh, compared to 20 years ago pre-internet? Can you can you kind of expand on that a little bit? Yeah, great questions, both of them. Um, so first, um, yeah, let's start with why Lancaster. Uh, you know, when my bosses from LA come in and spend any time here in Lancaster, they call it uh, it's like visiting Hallmark, um, just because it's um, it's beautiful. You know, you have both the you have a beautiful city, but then you also have um, just the beautiful rural countryside and and all of that. But um, Interestingly enough, uh, so the, our numbers here, just take our, like the numbers of Lancaster County. We're one, we're a very proactive human trafficking task force. Lancaster County has um, a ton of proactive work. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the trafficking is worse here than other places. It just means that our numbers are high here because we have law enforcement that is actively seeking out and proactively trying to put a, a, a stop to this problem, mainly because we have a district attorney that has made it... Um, a very prominent part of her administration to, to stamp this out. So that's, there is a lot of busyness here, but I do like to tell people in Lancaster County, like it's no worse, you know, and maybe it might be a little worse here than other counties, but it's not like um, you're going to find human trafficking under every rock. Uh, It's not, it's not that bad. But, but one of the reasons why Lancaster County is a bit of a hub. um, And if I could first state that sometimes because of the word trafficking, there's a little bit of a misnomer that, because we have a lot of highways here, that that's a, that's, that is the problem. The highways make some easy access, but one can, a person can be trafficked in the same hotel, never leave that hotel, and that's still human trafficking. So there doesn't have to be any transporting of people. And another misnomer is that people are transported across the borders into this country or out of this country into another country for it to be trafficking. That's, that's human smuggling. That's not necessarily human trafficking. So, but why Lancaster County? So one of the reasons um, where there's tourism, there's going to be human trafficking uh, for sure. There is, um, you know, we've, we've talked to some of the women that we've come in contact with and they have told us directly that they would rather be up here in Lancaster County than in Philly or Newark or New York City. It's safer here. Um, weird part, they can charge more money here and the guys are nicer. Um, so some of that's good. Some of that's warped to all of that, but but that shows a little bit into the to the psyche of you know Lancaster County of it's a really good place and um, but because we have so many um, so many touristy spots and a lot of hotels, uh, human trafficking does kind of form around that. And you were you were sharing with us that a location, a geographic region, the density of hotel rooms is, 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 is that's an indicator of higher trafficking. Is that right? It, it could be, um, for sure. Um, there's correlation. Again, there's a, that exactly. Yeah. That's the, that's the right term. So correlation. So, um, and, and it's no longer just in CD hotels. Um, we're very careful to honor the hotels that we work with. We don't share, usually don't share that information, but, um, uh, many would be surprised that, um, uh, there's, there's operations going in just about every, you know, I would say at one point or another, there's probably some type of human trafficking or some type of sex for sale within every, our most hotels within this county. And that has nothing to do with the quality of hotels. That has nothing to do, like a lot of the hotels that we work with, um, their agency, their organizations, their people are top notch, but human trafficking is so under the carpet that, um, traffickers can come in and use and, and no one, no one will be any wiser. They, they're that slick that human trafficking could be in any hotel and the staff may not know about it because they're that, they're that good at keeping it under the wraps. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I imagine, I mean, as you're sharing that, my mind's like, yeah, well, that makes sense. You know, you, you hear these news reports of drug smugglers uh -huh. and all the unique and incredible ways they're using technology and hiding things within things of things. And, you know, it takes tens of billions of dollars of governmental yeah. resource to sniff that out. Well, we don't quite have that same resource for human trafficking, do we? Uh, we don't have that same level of depth. There's, you don't see the vehicles for human trafficking like you do DEA. That's it. You're exactly correct. And um, again, traffickers can be very slick. And what they do well to avoid detection is they move around a lot. Um, so they don't have to, but uh, as far as the definition of human trafficking, but in order to keep themselves safe, safe, they'll be in an area for a day or two and move to another hotel. So they're always constantly moving. Um, they know that if they stay in one one location long enough, someone might get the indication like, hey, something's up. Or, you know, most hotels today have staff that are trained to look for what human trafficking looks like. So the longer they stay in an area, um, indicators or red flags can start flashing. So they they're constantly moving. And yeah, to answer your, your earlier question, um, you know, is hu human trafficking rather new or it's sort of like a newer thing on the thing that we, uh, on the, on the, the horizon that we need to be looking at. Um, so, you know, yeah, in, in some ways it's not that it's changed at all. It's just that finally law enforcement and the whole criminal justice, um, society has caught up to what actually was taking place. So I'm, um, um I'm retired law enforcement. Uh, I'm going to date myself a little bit. When I first started this, um, when I started first started law enforcement, um, was early '90s, and we had typewriters, so um, and no cell phones. So that's how old I am. But back in the day, there was no term for human. There was no term human trafficking. And that day, uh, back then, we had a prostitute on the sidewalk, and she had a pimp. And that, uh, but in generally, that's human trafficking. And now we've finally caught up to the fact. Of, okay, there's a lot more going on with this relationship. It's so much more manipulative. It's so much more exploitive. exploitive. So um, now everything's kind of caught up and now we're, we're looking for it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, I want to talk about the Ride for Freedom um, documentary, but to really drive home the, the, the trauma bomb that exists, the manipulation that exists, and again, if if I ask too much here, just let me know. But mm -hmm. is there is there a moment that really opened your eyes in working with a woman? Because you what? said they don't. Sometimes these women don't even realize okay. they're being trafficked. I know when we had North Star on, that was a big part of our talk, and they kind of worked through like the things that happen. From your experience, what was the most eye opening example of a woman being manipulated, where she didn't even really realize? that this had all happened in her life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and, and this hits a little ho close to home. Um, I can be vague about the details of this, but, um, we had worked a sting and there was a sting where, um, it was obvious human trafficking, uh, law enforcement was top notch and on it. So when he dropped her off at the hotel, um, she went into the hotel where, the, the operation was going on, but the surveillance unit outside saw him and, and made it a stop and, and started engaging with him. And they had enough to arrest him on promoting prostitution. She at the time was not, um, yeah, she, she wanted nothing to do with the whole situation. She was saying, no, I'm not trafficked. Um, and, and we could, there was indicators there that, um, that we definitely knew she was being trafficked, but, but we also know that she was going through all the signs of the denial part and she was really afraid of him and, and, and et cetera. So fast forward another eight months and out of the blue, she contacts one of the officers that, um, that, uh, was with, that was with on that detail. Um, and she says, uh, yeah, I get it now. I realize I'm being trafficked. Can you help me get out? So through department Homeland security, um, and, uh, task forces, she's, she got out, um, North star played a huge part in helping us along with this process. Um, but, uh, she was around for a, a little while and then all of a sudden she just disappeared. She went back, um, just like that. So, so it's just one of those, um, heartbreaking things where she's, um, kind of vacillating back and forth of trying to make uh, trying to understand the situation that has happened to her. Um, 
throughout this whole thing and um, watching, you know, watching the situation from afar, um, you, it's a hard tug because we know what's going on. And it was both a, an affirmation to us because this is what we teach. This is, you know, we, we do prevention campaigns all the time and trainings. This is what it looks like. Um, and to see it face to face like that uh, again, because we've seen this most times, um, that that's a gut punch that that's, uh, but they, they also, the statistics also show like, um, not unlike domestic violence victims and survivors that they have to, they go back and forth, um, sometimes five to seven times before they, they really come to the understanding of, of what happened. So that was just one of those touches her, 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 her process is not done. And, uh, yeah, we're still rooting for her. Yeah. Yeah, five. I mean, I I really was literally. I kind of went back in my seat when you said five to seven interactions and touches there. Mm -hmm. uh, we had on. I'm just going to say North Star because I forget the wonderful ladies' names, and I know I think some some leadership has changed there. Uh, but we had North Star on. The thing that really hit home for me was, um, they said the successes are when their people they care for say, "I feel like a human again." Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, yeah. the, like for people to lose, and those are easy words to say, but for people to lose that feeling that yeah. way entirely mm -hmm. is really profound. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, so, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was, I was finishing up. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it's a deep man manipulative, um, relationship, uh, the trafficker finds every vulnerability that she will have, and he will find different ways to exploit that. Um, and it's, uh, um, you know, I, I, over 20 years of law enforcement, I worked with victims my whole career, and I never quite understood the complexity of the trauma bond until I came into human trafficking work. And, and to be quite honest, to be very um, open and transparent, when I started looking at that, like, I had the same question most people, most other people have. Why, why aren't they walking away? Why don't, you know, if, if all the resources are there, um, what's that, what's that hindrance? And then when I began to get trained and deeply trained on the trauma bond and what that looks like, it, it all makes sense. But, um, once the deeper you get into the trauma bond, the more heartbreaking it is. Yeah. That, um, how do people, could people pick up on aspects of the trauma bond? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's probably a whole nother story and a whole nother, uh, uh, system in, in, in itself. And, and that's, you know, just to say most people like to answer the question, what can I do? What, what signs could I look for? Um, you can look for signs. Um, but sometimes the signs don't say everything, you know, many times people say like, Hey, is this human trafficking? And they'll, they'll, they'll give a scenario. And that scenario looks like a teenage girl that's having a, a, bit of a hard time with pairing, you know, her parents setting some boundaries or, or healthy boundaries or something like that. So, so we, we can teach the signs, but uh, you know, it's a lot bigger than that. And sometimes it's, it's uh, it's a both and, um, but generally speaking, um, what it would look like is someone that has lost all control to make decisions for their own life. That's one of the, one of the main things. And, um, trafficker would do things like separate all himself, separate her um, from all the healthy relationships that she has in his, in his, in her life. Uh, many times, um, we'll find that, that the trafficker will, will kind of blow up situations if there's challenges with family. And generally the, um, a lot of the survivors that we're coming in contact with have had, um, some risk factors in their lives that they don't have a whole lot of community around them or, or their family system broke down or community broke down. Um, but what, the trafficker will do is find whatever vulnerabilities in that system. If there are, should say, I'll find whatever healthy relationships there and he'll blow them up and try and create a distance between them. Uh, he does not yeah. want any healthy relationship or healthy conversation with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can speak personally, not to the human trafficking element of that uh, manipulative behavior, but in another aspect of my life where that uh, instrument of destruction or relationship okay. existed. So, you know, that's something I think for just anybody watching, anybody listening, if you see things like that going on, it's, it's likely indicative of a bigger problem. Yeah. Again, doesn't necessarily mean you call the police and say, Hey, there's a human trafficker next door. Uh, 
Zoe International. I'm sure on your website, you have a lot of resources. We had on we your do. social media, five things to look for and consider. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the kind of thing, if you see it, pay attention and um, maybe maybe reach out to a tip line and, and let the professionals take over from there. Absolutely. That's great advice. Yeah. 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 So tell us about A Ride for Freedom, this great yeah. documentary. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, so it's a it's a documentary that is just in the process of being released. Um, yeah, we're starting back um, first, how does cycling um, and human trafficking intersect? And and that's a story of my wife and I um, starting with Zoe International. So, well, first off, the a Ride for Freedom is a documentary on the exploits of our team, the Zoe team that we've entered into the race across America. So. The race across America is a race that happens every year. It's been going on for, I think, almost a little over 40 years. Um, Happens annually, starts in California and ends, used to end in Maryland, but now it's ending in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It's a 3,000 mile bike race. And the reason Zoe's involved in the race across America is every team that enters into the race across America, they raise funds for their charity of choice. So it's automa- it's already naturally a fundraiser for charities. So 2018, my wife and I were with Zoe in Thailand. We lived in Thailand for five years uh, working there, but we came home and um, we were interacting with our founders and they were just, we were involved in some meetings and they were talking about the amount of money that needed to be raised to open the home in Los Angeles. My wife and I were avid cyclists. So we said, well, hey, what if we, um, do a fundraiser cycling. We'll cycle across the country and we'll do fundraising events as we go and then raise awareness and also funds. So our founder said, sure. Um, so 2018, my wife and I rode our bikes from Virginia to, uh, California, um, total, I think a little under 4,000 miles for that ride, but we invited people to, to ride with us. And then when they rode with us, depending on how many days they rode, they would raise funds for that day. So we, we, it was a successful campaign. We raised about $180,000 and, and we thought, well, wow. that was good. Good for you. At that point then, we started having a bunch of riders with us that we were talking about the race across America. Now, this is an actual race. So now all the type A guys from Lancaster County were coming on and the cyclists and I don't have to say anymore, Lancaster County people, we get it done. So these guys would say, hey, let's do a race across America. Well, we can we can enter fun, we can enter and, and raise funds that way. So the next year, 2019, we entered into the race across America. Um, had no clue what we were doing. Again, it's we enter into the eight-man relay team. So the logistics in this thing are astronomical. It's a 24-hour a day race. So once the race starts, you don't stop until you reach the finish line 3,000 miles later. Wow. Um, it, and you're racing against all the other eight-man teams. So yeah, it is just, it's, it's pure chaos. It's, it's pure chaos. So I know all that to say, we ended up uh, finishing in like maybe six and a half days. We raised, um, we raised, I think the first time we, we raised over $200,000. So we thought, okay, that's his, uh, this is, um, a, probably a good, a good awareness project for us. So we do it every other year. Um, we've raced three times now. So 2019, we placed third, 2021. We actually won it, came in first place. And then in 2023, we, we did it again and we, we finished second, uh, this last year, you know, we, now we have, we're so, sort of known as Lancaster County's team. A lot of the other teams, um, that enter into this, they got to know us. We're known as Lancaster County teams. We're almost, we're known as the team from Amish country. So, uh, we carry that across the country. Uh, most of the teams that, that enter are, uh, I would say not most, um, maybe 40% of them, 30, 40% are from other countries. So there's a lot of, and even those, those people know that we're from Amish country. So it's like, a this, this kind of branding that we've, we've been getting. Um, so you're doing so in, Lancaster proud. <laughs> exactly. We, well, we hope so. And so in 2023, we did a documentary on this to use it as an awareness of what normal people can do, uh, when they have the passion to raise awareness and to rescue children that are, uh, um, engaged in human trafficking. So, um, that's what the, the documentary is about. So the documentary tells the story of you being involved in the race across America. It's the, it's our, our exploits of, um, the eight cyclists and the, at that point we had like 20 crew members. What's it like for all these people to get together and come across the country through the race across America 
Um, you know, one of the things we wanted to do was um, the eight cyclists, we gave them eight, um, we changed the names of the girls, but we gave them eight girls that Zoe was working with and their story. And to really connecting them to why we're doing why we're doing this. And throughout the whole documentary, you'll see um, it's all about the why. You know, three o'clock in the morning when you haven't slept more than a few hours over the past couple of days and you're absolutely exhausted, you're going to ask yourself, why am I doing this? And just there on the cyclist arms is a girl that he knows her story. He knows what she's struggling with. He knows that his engagement in this um, is helping her. And that's the why. So that's really the the thesis of the whole documentary. Yeah. And you're one of the cyclists? Uh, no, not anymore. So, uh, A, I'm getting older. I, I raced the first two years. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, it got a bit too big to manage. Plus, once we started getting known as Lancaster County teams, Lancaster County has a lot of cyclists. So a lot of guys were stepping up. And now we actually have a waiting list of guys that want to that wanna ride. So um, we've, we've created a, a very fast team. Um, crazy enough, we average over 20 miles an hour for 3000 miles. And that 20 miles an hour is a, it's a pretty, it's, it's moving. But now when you put in that, we climb over 175,000 feet in those 3000 miles, cause we're climbing the Rockies. And then we're also climbing the Appalachians. Um, that puts a little sizzle on those 20, on that 20 miles an hour. Um, so many times on a flat, we're hitting 24, 26, 28 miles an hour. So do you draw straws for Kansas where it's just flat across? <laughs> well, interestingly enough, and in the, in the documentary, Kansas was a really hard spot for us uh, this past year because we, we had no, and then normally Kansas is, is not bad, but uh, Kansas, you know, the Midwest can be very windy. And so we had a, we had a day and a half of headwind, you know, gusting at 20 miles an hour, but steady, you know, 12 to 15 miles an hour in your face. And we had like 90, over 90, 90 to 95 degree temperature. So it, uh, it was a really hot, uh, hot Kansas, hot mid, both Kansas and Missouri were really difficult for us this year. So it's, um, we're in the process of trying to, you know, we're a nonprofit trying to figure out, okay, what's the next steps of, of something. It's, it's really well done. We had a, a, a production company, um, uh, Astorius, um, production company make it for us. So right now, if you go on to our um, Zoe Ram website, um, if you just Google Zoe Race Across America, our website will come up, but it's, it's um, gozoe.org slash ram2025. That'll come to our landing page of we're racing again in 2025. So it has the details of, of what our team, who our team is, et cetera. And on there, there's a sign up that you can sign up and get the just get the link for the documentary. Mm -hmm. No, very good. One thing I wanted to point out, um, you, you have sponsors that you take on mm -hmm. uh, for the race uh, to help support the effort um, and the result of raising, you know, six figures with, you know, t a two in front of it. And I would imagine 2025, you'll probably have a big goal as well. Um, but the sponsors page, you know, we had Country Lane Gazebos and, and Redner's Markets as an example. Mm -hmm. It seems almost any charitable thing I go, you sports organization, which I was just after my son's football season kickoff yesterday, Redner's is there. Right. You know, Redner's is a Berks County business, but it's our neighbor to the north. Uh -huh. And, you know, Zoe International is connected to Berks County. We talked about a mutual friend of ours pre-show that you work with on the front line. Um, you know, so I, I share that when we when we show these sponsors, think about that. Think about what they're doing in your community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you can't donate to a company um, like Zoe International, you can't donate to the other companies and charities that we, sorry, not company, the charities that we have on our show. At least think about, if you're going to go get groceries this week, maybe go to Redner's instead, mm -hmm. right? Because they are supporting companies like Zoe right here in our backyard. They're supporting the dog rescues. They're supporting uh, help uh, help the fight. They're supporting all these great charities we bring on the show. Um, and this is, I just, literally, I think this is the fourth time in the last week I've seen Redner's name come up um, in my personal life, being, including this show. So I just wanted to shout that out. What what do your sponsors do for you? Like, what does their support mean for you and your your endeavors with Race Across America? Yeah. Great question. You know, it's such an affirmation to what we do. Um, 
you know, it's one thing we people are behind we behind us and and people will say like, hey, love what you're doing, whatever. But when they put a financial dollar amount to it, that really is an affirmation. Like, okay, they believe in what we're doing and they want to do good with the profits of their business, which I think is is amazing. And uh, yeah, to your point, I think it's just a, a we should be aware of okay, what organizations and what businesses out there are sinking um, their time, money, and resources into their own communities um, because all are. And I think it's I think it's just to your point, it's just a great thing to do to make sure that um, this is a community thing. So um, having that community impact is very powerful. Yeah, and and real quick, just a, a little left left turn in the conversation. You said it. Do good with the profits they make. I think a lot of folks look at donations like, oh yeah, well they they just get to write that off, mm-hmm. right? Like there's a whole Seinfeld episode about write offs. Right? <laughs> Are you a Seinfeld fan, Brad? Right I'm now? an absolute Seinfeld fanatic. Yeah. So you know you know the exact yeah. episode we're talking about. <laughs> what well, I just wanted to touch on that because I again I think most people understand this, but maybe they just need to hear it this way. A company needs to make money to be able to benefit from donating money. Uh-huh. Um, yes, every company, even if you're losing money, can make a donation, but it really only matters on the bottom line if they are making money. So they are actively choosing to take their profits and do good with them, which is exactly uh-huh. what you said. So thank yeah. you for that reminder um, of all those companies that sponsor you and all the companies that sponsor all the great organizations uh-huh. that come on the show Thank you for giving back to Lancaster County. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Brad, um, we often ask our nonprofit guests how the Lancaster community can support Zoe International. So what would you say there? Yeah. Well, first, um, I'd like to just kind of deflect just a, a second of, of like, what can they do for human trafficking? Um, and maybe you're going to ask that question later. Sorry if I'm, um, but just for us, it, it's more important to Um, we want to just, we'll stay as small as we can. We're not out for, you know, most of the stuff that we do, you'll never see on our website and you'll never see on our marketing stuff just because, um, we like to stay that way. It's not that it's not important to say what we do, but, but we just want to do the work. So we're not really advertising a ton of what we're, we're doing. So, um, but I will say, um, what I love about your question of what, what can people do? Well, they can educate themselves on human trafficking. Um, not everybody is set to be on the front lines or in the trenches of human trafficking. And that's okay. Not everybody's cut out for this work. Um, I often tell people if they think they're interested in this kind of work, just to make sure, dip your toe in the water, because if you jump into the deep end and you're not cut out for this, you're going to get chewed up pretty quickly. It's It can be very tough. Um, but what they can do is educate themselves. And we have, Zoe has a whole ton of resources on our website of how to educate yourself. Some of the things... Um, like the Polaris Project, but the um, Department of Homeland Security Blue Campaign. There's all types of classes you can take, online classes you can take, and there's just a wealth of information uh, that people can educate themselves. Um, um, but, but also, you know, um, in that, okay, who's doing good nonprofit work um, in this arena? And do your research. Find out who's doing good work, and if you want, support them. If not, there's you know, there's volunteer organ, there's volunteer opportunities to to get involved in. There's financial opportunities, but get involved somehow. Um, but mostly it starts with educating yourself on what human trafficking is and, and what how it's operating in your community. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Great answer. Really great answer. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and listen, if you I'll I'll say it for Brad because he's such a gentleman and such a champion for this cause. If take all the education you want, understand the signs. <laughs> But if you still want to donate, Zoe International is a great place to donate uh, some of those dollars too. If you have them to donate, yeah, uh, you're more than happy to take donations. I take it. Is that right? Uh, absolutely. But yeah, yeah. No, thank you for saying it the way you but did. You, yeah. But you were such a gentleman <laughs> to, to say it the way you did. I will say it for you. Yes, please donate if you're so called. Please donate uh, to do it. And it looks like there's even a a simple thing: ten dollars to end campaign. Uh, tell us about that. That's an, that's an interesting way to put it. Yeah. And again, most, you know, I think some people think that, you know, the problem is so large that, oh, well, what, what is my money? What can it do? But, but really the, the $10, it's just a way to, would you commit $10 a month to support us and to support the kids that we serve? Um, and within that, what we love about those monthly donors is that they become part of who they become part of our team. So they're getting constant updates on things, getting newsletters of what's going on. And it really not only, 
um, helps us financially, but also becomes really makes a part of the team. And, you know, I've been either my whole life has either been military or police work. And what I've noticed about this type of work is that in the past, there can be a lot of sideload stuff, but this is such a collaborative event and a collaborative effort to defeat human trafficking. It should be a team thing. It should be all community things. So, so when someone becomes a part of our, our, uh, our monthly donors, we bring them into the fold and, and educate them and give them ideas of how they can serve and things like that. So, yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. Wonderful. So let's just go over your websites again, because you have your website for the documentary and we have your main website, uh, gozoe.org, G-O-Z-O-E.org. Uh, that's where you'll get everything Zoe International. And then we had Zoe Ram okay. for the documentary, zoeram.org, Z-O-E-R-A-A-M.org. And that's where you'll pick up the Race Across America, Ride for Freedom, documentary, which, as you said, is all the exploits of an incredible six and a half day race. That's 3000 miles, blood, blood, sweat and tears of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I really like how you put um, the, you, you know, you gave a name, you gave you gave a cause, a person uh-huh. behind all the pedaling, all the blood and the sweat and the tears. Uh-huh. Uh, I thought that was a really special touch there to, to do that for the riders. And the, well, I guess you call them cyclists. There's not really riding. They are cycling. Cyclist riders, they answer to anything. But the, we, there's a joke that that these guys, we call them the prima donnas because uh, all they have to do is ride their bikes, you know, and which is really tough, I know. But uh, but the crew as well, the crew is, uh, you know, their, our, their job is to make sure that the cyclists get fed well, they get as much sleep as possible. So, um, but the, the riders are and the cyclists are very... Um, very honoring to the crew, but it's just a, an inside joke with us of, you know, um, they're the prima donnas and the, you know, they're the quarterbacks of the show and we're, we're yeah, just me. alignment. <laughs> I was just going to make that one. I, my son's an offensive lineman. So I, right. I remind him like, Hey, this is the life you chose. Exactly. You know? Exactly. There's no, there's no stats for linemen. There's no stats for road crew, right. food crew, hotel crew, um, all the stats for the pretty, for the pretty boys as we call for them. the pretty boy. <laughs> So, love it. Love it. Brad, thank you so much for spending time. Thank you for choosing to do the work you do um, and lead uh, with Zoe International. Again, shout out to um, the uh, Lancaster County Human Trafficking Task Force and specifically uh, our local district attorney's office run by Heather Adams. You know, all, all of this work can happen, but if our judicial arm doesn't want to sink their teeth into a problem, they don't necessarily have to. And, you know, that is just, I think, something to specifically call out that the, everybody's efforts are supported and not undermined by local um, uh, local judicial branch So uh, and enforcement. So thank you to them and, and Heather Adams and her team. Brad, thank you to you. Thank you for your time. Um, yeah. So we know you're an Eagles fan. We got to know that in the pre-show. Uh, we know you're a Seinfeld fan. We got to know that in the show. We're going to get to know you a little bit more with our Connection Cocktail, if that's okay. Sure, absolutely. All right. You want to lead it off? Yeah. So, Brad, we got three questions for you. Um, if you had more hours in the day, what would you spend them doing? Like if the day included more than 24 hours? Yeah, good question. Uh, well, right now I'm training for an Ironman triathlon in September. So, um, yeah. And my wife is so on board with this. Um, but they're pretty much all our time. Like we're not even taking a vacation this year because this whole last six months has been training and our date nights have been cut short and, and all that. So yeah, I would maybe continue training, but also be great to hang out with her a little bit and make sure that, uh, yeah, she's been, she's been uber supportive. And I promise this is my last, this is, this is my first and last one. I'm never going to do this again. Um, okay. That was, that so, was the question. Okay. And, and where are you doing this? It's uh, Cambridge, Maryland. Okay, so you don't have to swim in the Susquehanna or anything like that. No, no, it's uh, it's the okay, good. Chop Tank River, which is actually part of the bay, I guess. So okay, good. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So may, maybe question one dovetails into question two. Do you have a hidden talent? Uh, no. Recently, though, um, I'm a fly fisherman. Um, so within the past, I would say three years, I started to tie my own flies. 
Um, we've gotten pretty, pretty good at that, but that again, that's a, um, it's a learned, it's one of those things that you don't really pick up right away. It's, you know, experience and technique really matter over the years. So I take a lot of insight from guys that have been doing it for 20 years. Um, so yeah, I said that maybe that's a bit of a hidden talent. Very cool. Okay. And then actually question two might kind of relate to question three here. You've got your choice, a house on the beach or next to the beach or a house or a cabin in the woods. What are you picking? Yeah. Uh, we have a cabin in the woods, so definitely a cabin in the woods. Yep. Um, yeah. Figure with yeah. fly fishing, you're not really doing that in the ocean, are you? Right. But we do like the ocean, but yeah, uh, certainly yep. absolutely cabin in the woods. Very good. Very good. Very good. Well, Brad, thank you. Thank you again for your time, all that you do at Zoe International. Uh, again, if you'd like to uh, learn more, go to gozoe, G-O-Z-O-E dot org. Um, one of those nice, short, simple URLs to type in, gozoe.org, and see all the amazing work that they're doing to help end human trafficking. So thank you, Brad. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate your time. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, again, you know, I love the community aspect of what you guys are doing, bringing the community together, educating the community. Um, Lancaster is a very interesting, and we're very blessed to be here. So what you guys are doing is, is a really cool thing. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. All right. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. That's another good one. Heavy topic, but, you know, just because it's heavy doesn't mean we shouldn't shine light on it. And that's the whole point of our show. So some weeks were puppy dogs and other weeks were heavy topics like human trafficking. Yep. And uh, and so, wow. And, and there we go. As a trafficking survivor, uh, thank you for what you're doing. So this is somebody from YouTube commenting. So, um, Kiki, thank you. That's why we do it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It is. We have this reach. So, um, wow. Thank you. Um, so I guess we've got our sleep better tip and sleep testimonial. Tip. Testimonial. I got a sheet of paper here. Yes. So if you want to go? I will go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Lay them off. So uh, we sell mattresses here and we uh, ask all of our customers for feedback. Sometimes that comes in the form of an online review or, you know, Facebook uh, recommendation. Often it's these paper testimonial forms that we give to customers on their delivery. They fill it out and mail it back to us. This is one that came in last week from Marge and Don right here in, in Lancaster. Uh, they uh, highlighted Drew, uh, their salesperson. Drew has been with us. Almost 10 years. Coming up on 10 years. Yeah. He lets us know often. He does. Coming up on 10 years. He's a good salesperson. Um, Drew was extremely helpful. He did not pressure us. He took time to explain uh, options and listen to our questions and uh, offer us choices. Uh, and then also uh, buying a new mattress turned out to be a pain-free and enjoyable process. Often uh, buying a mattress is something people don't look forward to doing, right? It's like, oh, yeah, got to buy a mattress. But well, it's not like you had like, you know, Mattress buying 101 on college. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. So uh, uh, they would definitely recommend Gardner. So uh, thank you, Marge and Don, for trusting your sleep and health and well-being to gardeners. Uh, and uh, thank you for your kind words. Yeah. Um, and just, just to add to the, the type of testimonial that Ben had shown, you know, I, I'm always honored and, and astounded and last feel a moment of blessing when we have customers send in those paper forms. You know, we, we get more of those each week than we get the online reviews. Yeah. And in 2024, you would think it's the complete opposite. In fact, you would might think, well, why is it even, why are you even sending that out in 2024? Aren't we in this digital world? The reality is, you know, as a business owner, we know it's good to let people respond any way they're most comfortable. And so we continue to do both. I, I just think it's so great that we get those back. Um, you know, we digitize them and then they they are cataloged here in the store and we put them on display. But um, yeah, the reality is it took probably any of these people that write these reviews, except for the you know ones that might be only a few words. Like it probably took 10 minutes to, to put this together. Yeah. And that's right. Think about the, the yeah. answers, write it all down, fold it, put it in an envelope, stamp it. Walk into the mailbox. Yeah, use it. their own stamp. It's a process. Yeah, which you know, not a lot of people keep stamps in the house anymore. Yep. It's just a sign of the time. So, yeah, we're we're blessed and, and honored that our customers do take the time to give that added time for feedback. So, thank you to all of our wonderful customers. Um, my sleep better tip directly ties into this comment that we got at the end of the show. Um, 
and it might not be exactly related to a mattress. It might not be exactly related to a pillow or anything we sell there, but can absolutely help your soul in the way that you might be able to sleep better. So do something good in this world. Every one of us has the opportunity for impact. Here we are, two guys coming together to help our community shine light on human trafficking and who, uh, who is ever behind. Uh, I'm going to assume the name Kiki Love isn't maybe somebody's full name. It might be part part of the name. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. They saw value in our show today. And as a trafficking survivor, they're so grateful for what we're doing. And you know they know and we know shining light on us will likely help somebody down the road. So all of us have the ability to impact our neighbor, our friend, our family members, the kids we coach, the kids we teach, the people we have in church, just anywhere in our community, we have that opportunity to create impact. So please do it. Please take the time. Even if it's five minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, please do it. It's good for your soul. It's good for your neighbor. It's good for our community. And, uh, you will sleep better as a result of it, for sure. You, There's just something that releases in your body. I don't know all the scientific terms and the biological terms, uh, but all those happy, good feelings will help you sleep better, I promise you. So take that time for impact. If you want tactical stuff, you know, beyond what I just shared, you can get our Sleep Better book. Go to gardenersmattressandmore.com slash sleep dash better. We'll mail you a copy. But uh, I'd love more so for you to take up on my challenge to create impact because when our community is great, when our community is strong, our business is going to be just fine. We're going to have all the business we could ever want. So as long as our community is in great health, well-being, that's what matters. Yep. Well said. Yep. I think that's the show for this week. So we're back into it next week. Labor Day sales continue. Um, if we can help you out to sleep better, please do come see us. Call us. We're here to help you. If you want to be a guest on the show, if you have a charity, an effort that helps our community, reach out to us at LancasterConnects.com slash guest, and we'll get you on the show. And until next week, we'll see you, uh, see you next week. Take care.